All right, so what are we gonna teach now? Okay, yeah. I know, let's teach. The big thing with instructional planning or learning how to. Okay. Okay, give that a try. The big thing about instructional planning is thinking ahead of what you're gonna what you're gonna teach your class. Now, for me, one of the things I like to use is my little planner guide. What you didn't mean? In my planner guide, I'm able to map out all the stuff that I'm doing kind of across the board. Also, it's a good checklist just to kind of have something down to where, oh, I did this the day before. Let me do this with this class. Uh, it minimizes how much planning I really have to do, uh, depending on what you teach. Now, there's always those cases where things have gone completely out the window. You have an assembly that you have to do that morning and then that afternoon you're gonna have classes or vice versa, whichever. Monday. Oh yeah! Tuesday. Excellent. Not Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday though. <laughs> and Friday. Oh, I got And you have to come up with something on the fly. It's always good to have in your back pocket a number of quick examples. All right, so for examples, I always have a mass amount of papers, uh, not exactly kept in a very neat order. However, I always got something on hand if I need to come up with a quick project off the fly or have a quick example for some, some kids. So one of the big things I have is stacks of notes. These notes that I have, I've got everything from impressionism to color theory to sculpture to pop art so I can kind of pull any reference that I need to fit whatever project I've got on the top of my head. Another good example of something to have on the fly are worksheets. Now worksheets are one of those things that are big no-nos in general for us because we're up for projects. We're not for just quick daily work. However, sometimes you need these uh, because some of these come up to where you need to go ahead and have that little game plan in mind. Another quick thing to have by, just in case you need to do one of these, is a quick test. So that I have my tests already prepped, ready to go. Uh, I've got different ones for different things, and I always keep them saved on an email drive. Not on the a server or anything else, but on an email. Right. Why is it not, the reason I have it all saved on an email is because I can quickly access it, either on my phone or on the computer, and I put it up on the Promethean board. Don't have to worry about making copies then, just have the kids use their notebook paper to do the answers on. It's good handouts that have some quick illustrations, so the kids can create a good example without having to do a lot of legwork on your end. So just a couple examples of talking about different things. Uh, for me, human figure study is one of those things that we do a lot. Uh, so we talk about the human form and how the human form is designed and how, the hum and how to draw the human form. The good example just to have quick images in with those notes because then the kids are encouraged to draw along with whatever designs that you're or notes that you're giving them. Sunday. What the Got it? For once in my life, I'm confused. Okay, so for examples, uh, I have a box of all projects that I do, and this is just a one one box, I'll say that. This is one box out of very many boxes I've, I've sorted, because I like, I'm a pack rat. I'm fully aware that I am a um, hoarder. I'm, I know. I'm okay with that. All right, so when you're storing your pieces. Uh, for me, I'm actually in the process of digitizing everything because I'm a digital person. Um, take a picture uh, of the different projects, but here's one of the key things. Never try and throw these out. Use these as classroom decorations uh, as well because what you can do is you can gauge what your students want to learn and thus become more productive in your learning environment by having projects out that's, oh, I want to do that. Uh, for me, one of the big draws is uh, for my eighth graders, they want to go back to sixth grade year because they love the candy projects. I do a candy landscape, look, work off of Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, and then my sixth graders, wanted to do what my eighth graders are doing where they're working off graffiti. So I do a little bit of a merge in between the two just because both uh, seem to get well, do well in it. And it's a great uh, piece overall. And that's future planning that I'm doing. So I'm giving them some pieces to look at that one, I can go ahead and start planning out the lesson plans. I can plan out instructional videos, anything I need to ahead of time and say, oh, we'll do that in about uh, two weeks, a month however long I want to kind of push it back towards to get myself ready. That way I'm planning ahead, but I didn't really have to do a whole lot of the work. It makes my life easier. So a big thing for you to be thinking about is how do you plan to prepare for those future situations? 
All right, one other thing about instruction is knowing two things. One, your supplies, and B, how much supplies you actually have. Now, for me, being at a school for as long as I have, I've been at this one school for 10 years, think about the supplies that are already there that the other teacher already left you, or if you're uh, starting off a new program, try and think ahead uh, as you're planning for what things you're going to be teaching, having some extra supplies on hand just for backup. All right, so let's take a quick walk around this way. All right, so for me, I always order a few extra supplies just in case uh, I need to add to my stock. Uh, I'm always big on adding extra brushes because these things tend to wear out real quick, especially in middle school. Um, and then extra paint. Now for me, and I tell my kids this, I'm really stringent on, on my paint in general. I only buy primary colors, black and white. Why? Because I want them to make, make the colors themselves. I don't like a lazy student. I want to make sure that they have to do everything I want them to do but also push their own boundaries at the same time. Another thing is uh, glue. Glue is liquid gold to some of your teachers uh, because they will steal this from you Saturday. all the time. Uh, I always like to keep mine hidden. Uh, notice how this is just kind of halfway full and there's only one of them here because it's the only one I've got left. In my hidden cabinet, I've got some backups, a uh, couple boxes of extra glue just in case because you never know when some project might need a little extra. Also, do not be afraid to dumpster dive. Uh, I've got a cabinet here, but you notice that there's a giant log inside of it because I like to do my own projects as well. Uh, but the five gallon buckets, these are great, especially if you have a classroom that doesn't have a sink. Okay, so. Uh, being a dumpster diver like myself, I always find extra things that I can always use for different project. projects. Uh, another big thing that you always want to have on hand is some magazines as well as cardboard. These things always come in handy for paint palettes to mosaic pieces, whatever you guys are doing. Also think about what you can do to help create that environment that brings the amount of instruction that you want in your classroom. different to better yourself it's always good to fxx has every simpsons ever